There we go. <laughs> yes, good afternoon, everybody. I like to tell everybody that it's a terrific Tuesday, even though it might feel like it's Saturday. <laughs> You're going, do you feel the same way that I do? It kind of feels like Saturday to you? I'm sorry, uh, Tammy. The <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't listening because it wasn't it wasn't quite live and okay. I'm going okay is this loading or not so yeah. now we're live I apologize I wasn't listening that's okay um, I, I actually went to uh, a doctor because Erica was saying uh, you never listened to me um, <laughs> so I thought I had a, a hearing problem and I went to uh, get it the exam and um the uh, the technician said she said uh, you don't have uh, a hearing problem you have a listening problem <laughs> oh my goodness okay so that's a great conversation we might have to do a series just based on that because you know what i find most times that people listen to respond rather than listen to hear <laughs> right exactly <laughs> So everyone that's joining us, thank you so very much. Terrific Tuesday to everybody. It really feels like a Saturday. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, part of me, if it's because it's so sunny out, uh, a lot of great energy going out on out there in the world. And I am just so happy to be here once again, representing Lanning for Success um, with one of our members here, uh, Mr. Jean-Pierre Gallant. And if you don't know about Lanning for Success, I just want to tell you a little bit it's a platform where we bring people and business together. Everything that we do here at Atlanta for Success has you, the business owner, the entrepreneur, the aspiring entrepreneurs, um, the commissioned salespeople, oh my goodness, business professionals in every field, it has you in mind. So we have a number of opportunities here with Atlanta for Success for you to participate, starting with our free revolutionary, I will say that, online networking at its best, next level networking, where you get a chance to have 30 seconds to pitch who you are. Oh my goodness, how many times have you been to an event and you haven't got a chance to say a word to maybe two or three people that you've seen in the hallway. <laughs> but uh, we're bringing it to you uh, through Zoom, beautiful platform here that we're using, reaching people globally. And then of course we have expanded opportunities with membership. Now, what does that look like membership? Well, right now, I have one of our members. He's a lifetime member. We actually do a lot of these things where we're featuring our members. They get interviews. They get marketing and posts that are created through our head of marketing, Samantha Glass. And we post it through all of our mediums of social media that we have available. And uh, my goodness, I mean, Pierre Gallant, do you realize how much you paid for the membership, right? You thought that was a mistake probably, correct? No, I, I, I see a good, when I see a good deal, I, uh, I, I don't hesitate. <laughs> and as a CEO, someone who is the guru of financing, you know value, correct? Absolutely. Yes, perfect. And then, of course, the next way that people can participate with us as well is being a co-author in our upcoming Lana for Success book, because we really believe that everyone has Lana for Success in whatever that looks like to you, whether it's uh, moving from province to province, whether it's starting all over, whether it's reinventing yourself with a career, uh, actually coming through any type of adversity and being in your optimal job, career, business, all kinds of things. So, you know, take a look at our website, www.lanaforsuccess.com. And now I want to introduce uh, Mr. Pierre Gallant. We had a little casual conversation with him just a few minutes here before we came live. But this gentleman here, um, whew, sometimes I get uh, emotional because in my lifetime, meeting um, someone with your accolades and experience and wisdom, you know, we don't get a lot of personal, you know, up close and personal conversations. Right. Uh, he is the CEO of Complete CU Services. He's the founder of Market to Market. This gentleman is a husband, uh, a finance guru, helping people all over the world. Uh, he's a loving husband and he's got twin boys <laughs> and he still finds time to help people 
get to the next level in their business. And one thing that's really beautiful is that when you come across someone like him, you, it doesn't matter. He lets you forget all of the acronyms <laughs> behind his name because he's just so humble. He has a big heart and he's totally in alignment with everything that Atlanta for Success embodies. Big heart with you and mind. So without further ado, Mr. Jean-Pierre Gallant, please share with the good people what they're going to be expecting today from you. Well, thank you for that amazing introduction. Where were you uh, when I was trying to, uh, I was struggling through high school and college and, and university to, to tell that to my teachers. Um, <laughs> Let's write a letter to them after this show. <laughs> right on. So today uh, we'll be talking about uh, business structures, what type of business structures uh, you can, uh, you can uh, adhere to. Um, it's, uh, you know, either, either you're currently an entrepreneur or a, a business person and uh, you want to change the structure. So it'll give you an idea or uh, for the, um, the new uh, business uh, entrepreneurs that are thinking about uh, opening a company, uh, this will give you a little bit of, of background. And uh, subsequent to that, we'll be looking at uh, a really, um, I don't know how you could put this uh, interesting, but it's, <laughs> it's financial, bring it, bring it. financial ratios that uh, uh, financial institutions look at uh, when they're looking at financing your business. Yes. So, so everybody grab your pen and paper because you know already your girl Tammy. She has hers, pen and paper. Yeah. We'll give you a couple of seconds, 10 seconds on the clock, <laughs> pen and paper and get ready. Have your coffee, have your tea, have your snack, whatever it is. And let's just kick back here. We got about 30 minutes. All right, let's go Mr. Gallant. All right. So here we go. All right. Tammy, just confirm that you can see the uh, the presentation. I can see. It's not because I have on glasses. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to hide this here. All right. So, uh, Complete CU Services, as mentioned, one-stop shop for businesses, business solutions. Uh, we do audits and uh, consulting work. Um before we start the presentation, just wanted to uh, put the, uh, the legal uh, content of this presentation is uh, protected under Canadian intellectual property. Uh, Copyright Act registration 1168379. Um, exception uh, for stock images and photos, as well as social media data global slap shot report uh, created in partnership with uh, Hootsuite. Okay. So just uh, a little bit of, of uh, uh, we were mentioning last week, we had market to market, we were talking about uh, digital transformation. Um, did you know that there were 3.96 billion people that are on social media, which is more, this is a, this is a, a statistic from July, 2020, mm -hmm. um, which means that more than half of the population of the world uses social media. Wow. So with that in mind, what do you think the opportunity is to do advertisement rather than traditional? And I'm not, not putting down traditional uh, advertisement or marketing, but this is one of the mediums where it's not a TV show. It's not, uh, this is what people use on average four to six hours a day. So, it's really uh, the first time in history where you have this much attention on various social media platforms. 
So I'm just saying that because we are um, at the end of the month or starting the first week of November, starting yeah. the 9th of November, uh, we're doing social media marketing private training uh, flexible to your schedule. So it's four one and a half hour courses starting November 9th. Okay. Uh, we've got two people that will be attributed to uh, the entrepreneur or the business. We're going to give you a step-by-step -step online coaching to promote your business on social media. We're going to you know, do it for your industry, identify your target audience, uh, create your buyer persona or your ideal client, mm -hmm. social media and social media strategy. So all that for a uh, small price of $375. Wow. So, and that's four sessions? Four sessions? Wow. Okay. One and a half hours. So, uh, please contact us at info at completecuservices.com or call Erica Aguilar at 1 289 828 2648. I'm sorry, that's my phone number, but that's all right. Um, I'll answer, I'll answer for her. Um, so, uh, just, uh, you know, let us know. It's really something that is, uh, I, I must say is very inexpensive for yeah. the time that you'll be doing. And, uh, usually, uh, we charge a lot more. So please register now. All right, so today, as mentioned, uh, we're gonna be talking about business structure, financial ratios, the type of business structures, and bank ratios for loan approvals. So let's get started. All right, business structure and financial ratios. So the first thing um, I would uh, venture to say, uh, there's a lot of individuals that, uh, that help out this type of process, uh, but it's important that when you do get the information that you want to, you know, you want to get the, the, the additional details to verify with um, Canada Revenue Agency, uh, this is for Canada, or anywhere um, in the States as IRS, in Europe, you know, particular to your country, go to the register or just Google or whatever browser you're using. Um, just indicate uh, a, a business structure in whatever your country is and try to find the government website because, uh, and I'm not saying, but you may get some information. Like sometimes if you Google that in Canada mm -hmm. or whatever browser you're using, you may get information from the U.S. and you know it might not uh, might not be uh, uh, information that's uh, the regulatory uh, uh, way of doing things in your own country. Um, so in Canada, and as well as as most uh, you know countries in the world, it's pretty much structured the same way. Uh, sole proprietorships. Um, that is an individual we'll go into those in detail partnerships, corporations, cooperatives, and nonprofit. Um, in Canada, noted no matter what uh, type of uh, company structure, you always need a registration number um, to, to open the company. Mm -hmm. and you're going to be solicited. Uh, by CRA, which is Canada Revenue Agency, to get get that number because they don't want to they don't want you to forget uh, their taxes. I know I have a question too, Mr. Glant. How do you feel about some of the sites uh, that I have seen where you go to register and they say that if you do your registration through them, it's not a government site. They're they've kind of paired up something with Royal Bank that you will get like. Three hundred dollars or something is that like real? Because I didn't do it, but um, well, I've been just privy to that for a couple of people that are entrepreneurs, and I'm similar to you. I'd rather go to the actual official site, but some of these other sites are offering business plans online, and then they're also offering something else if you register right there on their site. 
Yeah, I I would always caution. You have to be careful because sometimes yeah. it's an easy way to to capture uh, uh, individuals and, and oh my goodness, you know, per, personal information. But, yes. but again, uh, that's that's just a caution, and and that's that has nothing to do. Uh, a lot of what happens, even if, when you're going onto the government website, yeah. there's an offer to open a company there. Yeah. Uh, so it's an independent party, which I don't, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to criticize, but I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the government website, but then mm. they send you to a third party. Um, and when I've done it, I've done it a couple of times. Uh, for myself and for uh, clients that wanted to open uh, different holding companies. And what seems to happen is that you can shop around and, you know, I'm thinking of, of an individual uh, uh, that I'll mention, uh, Marcel Winter, who, who, you know, has, has uh, her own company and she yeah. does this type of work. Um, but, but what, you know, the government website will, will automatically bring you to a third party that will, you know, do a register a company, but they'll mm -hmm. charge you. And it's not always the best price. And you don't get, uh, you know, maybe some, some suggestions or, or like, you know, what to do exactly. So um, in terms of financial institutions, obviously, if you go through that, which is a link that'll bring you to the RBC in this case, or yeah. whatever bank website, yeah. well, then you automatically become a client. So for them, it's, it's, uh, it's a marketing, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, it's very, very smart marketing, because it's uh, using uh, AI as, as you know, and, and it's growing their business. And it just depends on you. But I would just caution that when you are starting to not that, you know, I'm not, I'm not criticizing, but just to make sure that the links are actually to that financial institution yes. and not to, you know, uh, some other. So just make sure that when you go to any RBC, CIBC, C, uh, TD link, that you go first to their main website and see if they're offering that same type of product. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So sole proprietorships is really uh, owner occupied rentals as an example. So you're, you own a house and you're renting out some rooms, um, barbers, uh, local services, uh, house cleaning, uh, direct sales affiliates, uh, taxi driver or Uber driver, depending on the structure of the, the taxi company. Um, so sole proprietorships have a lot of advantages in the sense that it's the easiest and most inexpensive to set up. Um, the owner solely controls the business and, and you know, it's not really, uh, maybe if it's a family ownership, but, you know, mostly like the father and the son or the father uh, or the mother and the son or the mother and the daughter, whatever, but usually when sole proprietorships are, you know, one, one man, one woman show. Um, uh, the tax reporting is very simple because it's part of your own taxes. So as an example, your, your revenues are, let's say, I don't know, $20,000 a year minus your mm. expenses. And then you have a deduction, et cetera, but then your net revenues are going to be whatever after expenses so okay. it makes it very easy you just fill out one one um one tax uh, uh you know uh, your income tax the disadvantages however are that it's unlimited personal liability as there's no separation between the business and the owner so in other words if i run into problems and i own um you know i'm, I'm doing some uh, some uh, maintenance work or whatever it is yeah. and I uh, you know something happens and I get sued or 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 I'm not paying my bills because the business is not going well well a creditor could go into your you know uh, seize your house because everything is is a personal so 
there's no distinction, even though you're going to call it a, maybe a different name because you're not registered or not incorporated, you have that, I guess, that disadvantage. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be hard to raise capital. So, I mean, you know, it's basically um, reserve, I wouldn't say reserve, but it's, it's uh, more of a, a structure if you're not really going to try to raise capital or, or make it a, a, a big enterprise. It's really for, uh, as I mentioned, you know, small, small sh uh, shop or a family, yes. uh, family business. Um, and I guess the one of the other disadvantages is that it's very difficult to sell that type of business because uh, if you're doing businesses, uh, there's no there's no legal entity. So you can't really say, okay, well, I'm going to sell uh, Pierre Gallant's business, but in reality, there's no entity. So people could just take over the clientele without, you know, paying me the money. I mean, obviously you can get into legal battles, but it's just, it's not structured for, not structured for that. Uh, partnerships. So uh, partnerships are usually service industries such as lawyers, accountants, or medical clinic professionals. Um, the partnership advantages is that if you're several lawyers or several dentists, let's say, uh, you're sharing the risk, you're shared management responsibilities. Uh, the tax reporting is simple. It uh, doesn't require a separate tax, uh, corporate tax return. Um, but, um, you know, you have to be careful because there's a lot of disadvantages in the sense of risk of conflict between partners. This, mm. this occurs like, you know, you start off a business, uh, and everything's going great, but then when things, you know, kind of get sour, then there's there's you're still 50 50 so in other words if you're three dentists and um one of the dentists uh, doesn't work that hard it's it's the business model right so you yes. can you know and then if that des if you decide to get rid of that uh, particular partner then you know it has to be shared 33.3 .3 you know, across the board. So it, it, it makes it, you know, sometimes it's difficult. Uh, shared decision making, uh, buyouts can be problematic. One of the partner wishes to keep the business, the other one, the other two want to quit. So they just want to sell the whole thing. And then, mm. you know, so current partner will say, well, I want to, you can give me a better, it just sometimes it's not the best, but yeah, it works for different models different models do you yeah. have suggestions I, do you say it's, it's ideal for the medical industry is that what you were suggesting i'm not suggesting anything no <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right this is being taped sorry about that <laughs> this is what so, they no it, it's just that <laughs> most most uh partnerships are either lawyers accountants and medical clinics. Medical, okay right so so it's typical to that to that of, those industries okay professionals Good. do that okay um and there there there's also some you know some legal and some sometimes some tax benefits of doing it that way yeah uh, you know uh, it's uh, because you're also the expenses are on your person right mm -hmm. so uh, it, it's it's easier to show personal expenses that are included in your in your professional revenues. Okay. Um, this is the most par popular really is the corporation or the incorporation. So most companies, regardless of the industry, public or private franchising, uh, franchises or holding companies. So the corporation's advantage is that there's limited liability. So such as, as you know, uh, complete CU services, we're, a corporation and uh, I have uh, errors and emission uh, insurance, but if ever somebody were to, you know, try to, to, to 
to bring me to court or has a litigation against me, it's limited to my company. So I can, you know, it doesn't touch upon my personal, personal. Uh, assets unless, you know, I go to the bank and contract a loan and I sign over a personal guarantee. Okay. Uh, it's easier to raise capital from investors or financial institutions. All the stock market uh, uh, listed companies are, you know, corporations. Uh, being incorporated is often a requirement when doing business with governments or other businesses. Um, and it's it's more respected. I, I yes. think it's more, uh, you know, uh, it's more of, a, I guess, a... I know it's more more of a, a legal structure that is binding. So there's two companies that are dealing with two companies rather than one company dealing with mm -hmm. um, uh, sole proprietorship. So business yes. income can be paid out. Uh, this is a very good advantage. Uh, yes. You can pay dividends. Um, so your your taxes. Uh, so if you're declaring dividends instead of a T4 revenue from a company. Uh, you get in tax benefits, but it's not ideal for, let's say, the COVID-19, mm -hmm. where, you know, I declare dividends to pay uh, my salary, but then it didn't allow me to apply uh, my salary expenses to qualify for a, a COVID-19 loan. Oh, so boy. Yeah. And we know what, speaking of legal, we have some viewers here and uh, Samantha Glass is here. Eric Aguilar is here. And so is Kelly uh, Chason. And Samantha Glass is running one of the largest um, paralegal firms in Toronto. And she echoes your statement. She has a comment here, quite a few actually, but uh, she says the agreement needs to address all the what is included. If there is a disagreement, where will it go? Um, arbitration, mediation, or litigation, agreeing ahead of time can save you tons of money. And she said, this is a great topic. So she said, yeah, thank absolutely. you so much for sharing yeah. this. I, I yeah. totally agree with Samantha. Uh, you got to get a shotgun agreement, which means like, okay, uh, your partner, even in, no matter what the structure, but mostly in, in partnerships, but yes. if you don't agree beforehand, um, you know, things can happen. If you're only two in a, in a corporate, in an incorporation, the same type of thing can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, like when, you know, nothing to do with my, with my previous partner, however, he was in a different stage of life. So, you know, it was, a, we had a very, very good partnership and he was very, uh, you know, excellent in, in terms of, you know, left me the company when he retired, but it could have been, you know, uh, no, uh, you know, and you owe me 50% uh, of the profits you're going to make, right? right. So you, you have to, you know, everything is, is great until that happens. And, and depending on the financial situation of the person, when they retire, they may say, well, you know what, I had all this money in the stock market, but then when COVID-19 hit, I lost all my, my resources. So I need to survive. And then it causes like, conflict and then well then you can hire samantha <laughs> yes exactly samantha glass and uh we'll make sure to put her contact information in there she comes highly recommended amongst everybody uh she's a mentor as well we should be spotlighting her in an upcoming series as well for all of her legal advice that she gives in counsel <laughs> right again right exactly so um disadvantages it's, it's it's expensive but you know what uh, it's 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 not that expensive, you know, you, yeah. can, you can, you know, just check around, but it doesn't cost that much. I, I agree again with Samantha. Um, you know, if you, if you get a lawyer to do this, um, you know, document the minutes and then you can also, which is, which is a, a really good point is when you document things in the minutes, it also, so let's say that in my company, uh, everybody must wear a suit when they go, you know, to, uh, to visit their clients or, mm -hmm. or, you know, and then you can put a policy in to say, okay, well, you know, all expenses for suits uh, limited to, you know, a grand a year can be deducted and, and you can kind of design 
what are the needs and what are the expenses that you're allowed to yes. uh, do. And this, this also helps the accountant. And sometimes accountants will, you know, suggest that you do certain things. Anyway, so it's, it's important to get the legal paperwork, you know, 100%. Because yes. when it starts out, everybody's on board. But then when it starts making money, and then some people want to get out, they want to get out the wrong time. Anyway. <laughs> yes, where are we at for time? Let me take a look. 1233. Yeah. And let me see if we have any other comments or questions here. Uh, oh, yeah, Samantha Glass says corporate bail is not absolute. So it's not full legal protection. She also says have a well drafted partnership agreement and exit clause. Yep, similar to what you're saying. So she's fully in alignment with what you're saying. Um, amazing to have her participate and echo what you're saying. I mean, wow, two minds. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, the other thing is, uh, yeah, you must file a corporate tax return, but it's not, I mean, you, you, you can hire an accountant if it gets really complex, but yes. you, know, you can do it yourself. It's not, it's not over. I think there's more advantages, definitely a lot more advantages in a corporation and corporation than there is in any other structure. Okay. Um, Next is uh, the cooperatives. So cooperatives are mainly credit union, insurance cooperatives, housing cooperatives. A lot of the agriculture uh, industry, farmers and, and those type of cooperatives, uh, dairy cooperatives, um, it's all a uh, type of united, uh, united uh, kind of, of, of membership. So your your it's like a costco but not really so okay. costco you are a member but it's more of a capitalistic thing but they do share uh any profits at the end of the year so it's the same thing in credit unions and these others it's more of a uh this started out actually in in quebec of all uh, i mean in canada it started out in quebec with desjardins in the 1800s where yes. you know people got together and they raised money and then they would distribute the profits to uh the people that invested so originally the finances of um of a financial institution or a credit union was through the membership and that's changed uh, over the years uh there's limited liability uh the disadvantages is that decision making can be slow uh, there's a risk of conflict between members. I've seen that a lot in housing cooperatives. Um, you know, uh, if you want to do something or you want to sell your property, uh, it has to go through a whole rigmarole. Um, anyway, um, but it's uh, credit union industry uh, is worldwide, right? So uh, yes. it's, it's a different model. Um, so finally, the nonprofit, well, it's non-business, uh, churches, charities. Uh, I just listed here the top 10 uh, in Canada. Okay. So normally they have employees. Um, as you can see, uh, the first one, World Vision Canada. So they issued $247 million of receipts, tax receipts. Their revenues were $445 million and that was in 2016. So their assets are $71 million, but they had to pay 477 staff members. So even mm -hmm. though it's a nonprofit, um, the larger ones, they have to pay their employees. Uh, I was surprised to see, uh, you know, the, the, the way that it was structured, I, I had no idea that World Vision would be number yeah. one. Um, but, you know, this is only for Canada. So it doesn't include, you know, uh, different, uh, different charities that are built uh, that, you know, <clears throat> that wouldn't be included. Wow. So... Uh, for non-incorporated borrowers, so if you go to the bank uh, and you're looking to get financed, um, small business lenders, 
might, it's not 100%, but they mm -hmm. might use traditional retail lending ratios. Um, but when here's the issue when you're not incorporated. So, or, or, so as a, a sole proprietor or even a partnership, yeah. they're going to include all of your personal debts when they're calculating uh, a loan uh, for your business. So, huh. um, so in other words, if you're familiar with uh, mortgage lending, uh, these are the CMHC retail ratios. So gross debt service ratio means uh, all the um, all the debts that you need to pay just to live in a dwelling. So I apologize, the line here kind of went down. It's supposed to be the division line, but I you yeah, that's okay. Can see I was not very good in math, right? So I put the division <laughs> line totally elsewhere. So there's hope. There's anyway, hope for someone uh, like me then. There's hope for someone oh like yeah, me. Definitely, Thank definitely. you. Thank you. I need that. <laughs> so the gross uh, gross debt services principal of your mortgage or your rent, uh, plus interest on the mortgage, plus taxes, plus heating costs, yeah. divided by your annual income. In addition to that, the total debt service is principal interest, taxes, heat, and other debt obligations, so car loans, et cetera, and may also include whatever loans that you have in uh, your business. Now, here's the catch. So if you're declaring a lot of expenses on your business, well, you may be penalized because that's divided by your annual income. And some of that you can you can kind of discuss with the with the lender to say you know I'm taking it out here and then but you know chances are a, it might be a difficult situation. Yes. So in terms of um, commercial lending, so what they will generally use are these ratios. There's, I mean, there's multitude of ratios, but I just took you know, the ones that were most common to simplify, because I know we don't, we don't have three days to discuss all the different types of ratios. So uh, loan to value, uh, debt service coverage and debt to equity. So here's loan to value yeah. is the ratio that is requested for the loan amount. So basically, if we look at, uh, if I have $100,000 of accounts receivable, so, so these are, you know, it could be real estate, it could be inventory, it could be uh, different assets, but here are the most common. So when we're doing operation, operational lines of credits, what the banks will be looking at, let's say you want to finance your accounts receivable. So the bank wants to make sure that your line of credit will be fluctuating. So what they'll do is they'll finance 75% of your accounts receivables minus your 90 days that, you know, so whatever has not been paid in the first 90 days, then they'll exclude it. So if I have a uh, hundred thousand dollars in accounts receivable, they're going to finance 75% of that. So 75,000, but I have a $10,000 uh, account receivable that is due that has been due for 97 days they're going to take ten thousand dollars off and they're going to say hey pj you you owe us ten thousand dollars so you know what are you going to do to reimburse us wow inventory is another you know uh banks don't like financing inventory um you know, they do that. Uh, usually it's 50%, depending on what it is. I remember when I was an account manager, we were financing gold uh, because there was a very uh, huge product production uh, jewelry company, but we were only financing 50% of gold. And the reason why is that it's very difficult to track, uh, you know, those things. Hmm. But usually that's the ratio for for uh inventory, inventory no matter what if it's if it's widgets and most of the time you know if a company goes bankrupt these accounts receivables and inventory are usually you know you get maybe 10 cents to the dollar that's why usually banks will take 
personal guarantees because mm-hmm. they want to make sure that you know once if ever that would happen that scenario would happen that they have something else to get real okay. estate I have yeah. a I have a there's a couple of questions here sure. before you get to the next one uh Samantha Glass is asking do you draft business plans to assist with the financing yeah it's a, you know what uh, absolutely we can do that and and the thing is is that all of the, the steps that we looked through uh, episode one, two, three, four, and next one will be five. Yeah. These are all, these are all steps that you need to have in your business plan. So okay. yes, Samantha, thank you very much for, for adding that. But if, if you want to do it yourself, which you're, you know, there's no problem there, make sure that you follow those steps because those, you, you can have great numbers, but Really, when it comes down to commercial lending, unlike retail lending, it's less mathematics and it's more about what the entrepreneur is able to do. So I've wow. you know, I've been I've been I've been lucky yeah. to, to to go through this type of industry. Yes. And, and we would meet uh, individuals that are you know, uh, very, very smart, have great ideas, but they're inventors and they don't have any marketing strategy. They don't have yeah. that. They're very good at what they do, but they need, you know, a partner to help them market their idea. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you see that a lot on um, Dragon's Den or, yes. or, or those, you know, they're, they're brilliant people. Brilliant. But, but they can't even price their their service or their yeah, or their and it, it's sometimes very sad. It's like you know what, you really have to get that exactly. Dragons Den is is kind of a a good uh, an educational way to to see what what the banker. Well, this these are they take a lot more risk because they're yes. partners. But but it, it, it's kind of the same structure, right? You gotta. Make sure you got a strategy in place because the first question you're going to say, Tammy, you've got a great restaurant idea. Well, you know, the banks aren't really hot on restaurants, but <laughs> w- what's going to make your restaurant different than the others? Oh, well, I serve this and that. Well, how do you, how are you going to make that known? Like, do you mm-hmm. have a following or people following you? So you can't, you know, you get a, you get a research, do a lot of, you know, thinking analysis and, and that brings me to a question yeah. because things have changed to much more online uh do you see that like the banks now looking at those things you just said about the following because i just know an individual i was working with uh, last week who was applying for a grant and they asked a lot of questions in that grant on what their social media presence was absolutely and so this is like so now this is a big this is a bigger thing than ever before absolutely so social media today even like six months ago yeah right? yeah six months ago my goodness yeah, six or seven months ago um i can't do math very well either so, <laughs> there's um, hope for all of us <laughs> yeah so so basically you're 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 bang on um a lot of my customers are credit unions right so okay. so it wasn't an issue to lend money to a restaurant. It wasn't an issue to lend money to, uh, to, to uh, well, farmers, farmers are, you know, the best industry to be in, uh, in 2020, but my God, they suffered in the past, right? They, they yes. had to, you know, couldn't meet their quotas, this and that, whatever, but that's the need right now. You're, you're, everybody's needs have, you know, have changed. I used to have a particular type of yogurt and a tip, uh, you know, particular type of orange juice that I wanted when I went to the supermarket. Well, after, you know, their shelves are empty or my toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know, goodness. Shelves are empty. You don't care. You just want the uh, product, right? You don't care. And then and you can kind of adjust your taste buds and get rid of those <laughs> psychological barriers where yeah. you're like, okay, well, I have to have this one. Yeah. Napkins were also like, you know, the, <laughs> you know, the lunch napkins, even that was air empty. 
<laughs> oh my God. I mean, we're, we're using crazy. napkins today. We used to use uh, paper towels and now, you know, we got napkins going and, and we're looking for things. And the other day we we're looking for toilet paper again. You know? <laughs> we, we have a house of five people and, and oh gosh, same with us. And we're going, okay, uh, let's ration guys. <laughs> So anyway, all that to say, if you if you had toilet paper in the past and you were a toilet paper company, you're doing well today. But there's certain things if you're a restaurant and you had no social media, um, you were the best French fry place or poutine place yes. uh, in the city. And uh, but you you have no uh, social media presence and you don't do any deliveries through Uber or whatever, you're dead, right? So unfortunately, um, or you're gonna have a lot of challenges in the, in the next couple of, mm -hmm. of months. So all of the 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 thing is, Tammy, uh, social media yeah. is is the future. So if you're if you're like I said last week, if you have Decathlon, which is a huge French sporting store that's installing itself uh, not far away in a, in a mall. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'm not a strategist. Maybe they, you know, they analyzed it. But now that you can order that people have actually attempted that were that were scared to order stuff online before, like myself, not that I was scared, but it wasn't in my habits because I needed to, you know, to, to try on clothes before I bought it. But yeah. I bought a pair of jeans for the first time in my life through, uh, I won't mention the company, but, but I ordered. Yeah, because they're not paying you and you don't work for free. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you, if you want to pay me, the name of the reach out to him. Right. I'll put his, uh, his, his uh, coordinates in for you. <laughs> yeah. And I just say that I'll start with my, the letter of my last name. So anyway. Um, oh, that was too. Oh, actually, no, that could be quite a few. Wow. You got high taste. He has three letters. You've got high taste there. Yeah. No, no, no it's nice. Anyway. So, so basically uh, I ordered some jeans and, and they were fine. Right. Cause yeah. that, I don't know why, but I thought, okay, well you have to, I've been the same, you know, uh, pretty much the same size all my life. So I know yeah what what fits me especially like shoes shoes uh i still need to walk around with them but i'm gonna buy them anyway if i like yeah. the way they look so all that to say is that social media is so important right important. now and 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 the generations are not getting uh older right so what i mean by that is that the gen xers uh the baby boomers and uh and uh, millennials and now the Gen Zers are all on social media. So, so what this did, this pandemic just shifted all of retail. So there's only a few things that you can't get online. You can't go to the dentist online yet. Not but yet. I've seen, I saw mobile, mobile. I've seen dentist. mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Home to home, right? Be and that's you know. What is this going to have an impact on the future of our social abilities? Is it going to be, you know, it could be positive. It could be negative. I, I'm not going to comment on that. But the less you, you go out and socialize, the less that you buy and purchase. But your, the purchase online is at the end of your fingertips. So this is really cool. This is really cool because uh, it, I think it will give people a lot more confidence as to when they present themselves to a bank for finances, you know, some people have like, oh my gosh, like half a million followers on Twitter and all these subscribers on their YouTube. And now they want to take whatever they've been doing and turn that into a business. So it's really nice to know that that is really property and it really is an asset and it can be looked at that way from uh, the bank. So thank you for sharing that. So everybody listen, if you're not, I'm going to just plug this right now, because if you're, if you're in business and you're not a part of Atlanta for success, you're missing out huge. Uh, we're doing things behind the scenes to optimize our website where you get to piggyback off all of the activities being happening right now, just by being a member on the website. Now I'm from the website kind of internet kind of advertising space. And I know firsthand that if you just put a website out there yourself, 
you're going to be lucky if 20 people <laughs> visit your website. You know, they always say, uh, you know, I think Kelly, Kelly Chanson has a, a nice quote. Um, you can go alone, but you can't grow. You, you, you can't grow alone, something like that. It's someone to think, but you need a team. You need a, you need a whole team. You need to be used in all the resources available to you. I will get the proper quote uh, from Kelly Chanson. But um, yeah, plug in to Lana for Success, become a member. It's a global platform. We have like 14,000 people on a Facebook group. Um, you're hearing someone here who's documented CEO, a master of finances, sharing so much information. If he sees the value of being a member and sharing his expertise, I think you want to take a look at this again. So yeah, I'm sorry, because social media, like you can't even get your own following. You put a Facebook uh, page up, Mr. Uh, Gallant, and you're lucky if you get like 20, 40 people right away. You have to go around. So how you can you how can you actually grow your own network and also your social media space? You need yeah, a team. I think, I think I think the biggest mistake is that people will go on social media without targeting a market. So you can, exactly. get, you can get a lot a lot of hits, right? You like you know one of our videos went out you know crazy. You got twenty six thousand views. Yeah. But but but. Is that is that relevant? Uh, you know, there's some in in South America. Is that going to generate any? You know, half of the half of the population that was listening to the video don't don't understand English, so it, it it doesn't mean anything in terms of that. For me, it was more exposure, and you know what? The more I can I can promote myself and promote our business and promote landed for success. However it's important really to target your market and you have to have a budget and you have to have a strategy. You can't just go out on social media. And believe me, as Tammy says, if you put out a, a video on YouTube, <laughs> you're going to get, if you're lucky and you send it to all your friends, yeah. you get maybe 20 views. Yeah. So, what about subscribers? Your friends sometimes don't even subscribe to your own videos. Yeah, so, you know that you, doesn't happen you, either. You bring, yeah, you bring something uh, really to the head here and really to light when you talk about um, the social media aspect of it, and especially exposure. You know, it's important to know that um, exposure is where it's at. Uh, so if if twenty people are seeing your information, it's not enough. Need more eyeballs on it. Right. I used and, to and always you do have that. to figure out too who, who's your who's your uh, uh, who's your uh, your target audience, your target audience, and your and your uh, client, right? So when you have your ideal client, okay. First of all, for me, if I were on TikTok or if I were on YouTube, I am on YouTube, but YouTube is not speaking to the my potential client. I mean, who, who is your there. ideal client, anyways? Because Samantha Glass had asked that earlier. Um, what type of clients do you actually serve best? Anybody who has a, a, a company, uh, anybody, our, our main, main bread and butter is the financial institutions. Um, but we also do, uh, you know, uh, consulting for all types of industries, uh, any large corporation or small, medium so pretty much anyone that has a business or aspiring to have a business, correct? Yes, but but smaller, you know, uh, startups uh, mm -hmm. is is really not really our market. But yes, we can we can you know help them out in any way, shape, or form. It's just that uh, our our usual market is is B two B. So it's uh, you know credit unions to us, financial institutions, foreign okay. banks, yeah, um, and a lot of their clientele uh, or, you know, wealth management uh, that, that they want to do due diligence for another corporation that we can do. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got so much experience. Um, I was thinking next week to, to, to maybe present a few of them, but all of our all of our uh, contractors have like have been working in financial services for over 30 years, such as myself. So we're all surrounding ourselves and I'm not talking about, you know, I don't have a, a I, I fell into internal audit. I fell into consulting because I started out as a teller. I started out 
in the in the field and you know worked my way up to being compliance officer for five provinces uh doing you know being in charge of of uh internal audit departments and in, in various institutions yeah so so that came but it's not like um as i as i mentioned so many times before i always respect um individuals that have experience yeah um that have lived through a certain process rather than have learned the theory so you can take i i remember when i uh did my mba i was you know quite a few years i i did it at night and at weekends and i was taking marketing class and i was just sitting there and i'm going what is this and i could not like wrap my head around it was all theory it had nothing to do with you know i had been maybe 12 years in the bank at that time it had nothing to do with what i had seen so mm -hmm. i'm not saying that it's that it's good bad whatever but those theories those strategic plans that you see you can you can have a cookie cutter approach but if you don't know how to identify who your 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 target client is then it's all out the door it's out and the that, door that happens a lot and unfortunately uh it's 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 you grow with your demographics so what what that what what you know kind of what we said in the beginning in business risk is that i'm a guy from gen x uh yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> just we're at the top of the hour here now one o'clock kick it in okay okay so i'll be quick so we're, we're we're finishing up here now sir so go ahead i don't want to have you yeah, stop so we, because i just, uh, just want to give you know, an eye on time for you yeah you're just comfortable with with your generation so you're not going to be uh you're going to be more uh you're going to be more challenged to to look at uh individuals that are younger or that are in the younger generation but if you if you stick to your mindset in your generation you're burned like it, there's no way that you yeah. can continue that way so you have to to grow and evolve with whatever's around you and you have to adapt and it's 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 not easy it's not easy anyway here we'll go into the debt service coverage ratio uh so here's a very important ratio for uh the banks or financial institutions and what it basically means in this example is your net income pre-tax so if you're making five hundred thousand dollars pre-tax plus the interest that you've already paid out plus depreciation which is basically depreciation is just money that is an expense but it hasn't gone out the door as well as amortization so you get your ebitda which is basically the cash flow that came into your hands in the company. Then you've got to pay off the interest expense and principal payments, and your total is $800,000. So your debt service coverage ratio in this example is 1.03, which means you have a dollar and three cents to pay off $1 of debt. That does not work. Banking institutions, will usually, depending on the industry, have, I'd say about 95% of the time, $1 and a quarter for every dollar of debt. So in this particular example, they would have to see what el other alternative they could do. But it's very important to understand that net, you have to be making a dollar mm -hmm. and 25 cents for every dollar of debt that you think you want to borrow. Wow. Okay. And debt to equity ratio is very easy. It's just dividing the total liabilities by the shareholder equity. Uh, we'll look at uh, financial statements next week, but basically it's, it's kind of like uh, the, the, the debts that, uh, that PJ has, um in terms of loans etc and my equity which would be my net worth uh if i have two times the debt then that's acceptable to a bank as okay. soon as you get 
into two and a half, three, three, you're probably going to have to go, you know, find an alternative lender. But okay. that is not applicable to uh, commercial real estate. This is strictly for or most likely for uh, asset lending, uh, such as uh, accounts receivable, inventory, et cetera. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Um, next week, we'll be doing um, October 19th, uh, what type of credit facilities and financing resources are available. And People really have been asking about this to me a couple of times. When is that coming? <laughs> right. So mark your calendars, everybody. <laughs> And uh, finally, I'm coming back to the social media marketing uh, yes. that we're giving. And um, you can register now and uh, get in touch with us. And we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate you with your schedule. Only $375. It's really worth it. And the crowd goes, wow. You thank know, you. Thank you. So much value on that session that you're offering. You know, I've uh, known several people and even myself, uh, you know, paying a couple hundred dollars or more for consultations. <laughs> and we, even though we learned something, but it wasn't designed for us to learn something. <laughs> that makes sense. So what you're yeah, offering so there is huge value. <laughs> yeah. And what, what we decided to do is that we, we took out the took out the the general class because yeah you know what everybody is going to be there we want to try it out you know if we can get some but i think everybody really needs like hands-on one-to-one mm -hmm. okay but we want so before you even start you know the training we're going to ask you a couple of questions um about your your business what they you know what your, your thoughts are because I, I you know i don't i don't want to invent stuff but, yeah. but try to see what you're doing right now what type of industry you are and then we'll work with that and then we'll say okay you're not gonna you know if, if it's me like again i'm not gonna go on tiktok i could but it's not going to yeah. be like the clients that, that are going to, you know. So, uh, you know what we should do after we do your last series, uh, last part of the series next week, you and I should schedule some other time as an introduction to let people kind of know what they can expect. Um, Cause I find that, you know, repetition is the mother of all learning, but more than that, you know, um, information you know we're living in a world now where we're getting things at such you know lightning speed that i find that sometimes people need to hear it need to see it need to hear it over and over and over before it sinks in and says oh my goodness okay this is exactly what i need so yeah we should do something like that i did get the quote i was saying it properly uh so that's great so samantha glass put it in here for me anyone can go alone but no one can grow along right uh kelly McDermott, Shea Song, that's her quote. And it just makes me want to just say that towards the end here because Lana for success, that's what we're all about, bringing people and business together and growing and helping each other. You know, um, even um, Gordon So, one of the co-founders has said that, you know, you don't just go to an event once and think that everything's going to happen. It's like going to the gym, you know, you were in there for three hours and you worked out. Did you lose weight? You know, probably not. <laughs> So you just keep going at it. Everything is all on consistency, being committed. And once you experience what this is all about, you're definitely going to find something here for you. Um, the value, I mean, from being a member myself and blog writing and being interviewed, you, you sometimes you actually have to pay to be interviewed. Right. So how cool is it as a member, $100 lifetime membership for the first 200 we're almost at that number. So if you haven't decided, you better decide soon that you can have a mini series similar to what Mr. Gallant has actually created here and be exposed to all kinds of individuals. The best thing about this is that you get to use this for your own marketing for future. So it's just amazing. So I'm so happy that you're here. Tell, can you tell the good people what you like about Lana for Success before we close off? Absolutely. Well, uh, again, it's uh, all the connections, right? Uh, uh, what 
you know, amongst all those connections and those free uh, networking events, um, I got to say that this here is, uh, first of all, it's a learning experience, right? Uh, these interviews and the, this type of thing uh, for me is I've done it so many times live, right? But you always have the technical issues and, and yeah. I, gotta, I gotta admit when I started doing this, I had no idea what I was doing. I had to ask uh, Erica, okay, well, how do we do this? How do I do this? Uh, uh, you know, how do you go live on Facebook and, and that? And I've learned so much uh, through this as well as being able to, um, you know, have, have people ask me questions, uh, you know, uh, all the wonderful people that are at Landon for Success. And, uh, you know, like Samantha, uh, Gordon, Jay, everybody, it's, it's like a big family and we're all trying to help each other out. So, you know, guys, uh, for a hundred bucks, even after um, the first 200, a hundred bucks a year, is, are you serious? Uh, it's like, it costs you that much for a tank of gas, depending on, you know, how fast you go and how much you spend your gas. But two tanks of gas really yeah you know uh, for all the connections and and whenever you go on to a networking i get a few uh individuals that say hey uh let's get together let's meet uh, i'm meeting with akil a second meeting with akil uh we're going to dis discuss ways that we can work together right mm -hmm. and again that comment from uh from uh, kelly right uh, you, you got it you can work, you can have great ideas, but you really need, you need to bounce things off of other people, yeah. see, you know, okay, well, and then you got to find out, okay, well, can I, uh, can we help each other out? Like, yeah. uh, you know, Akil and, and myself, we have two totally different businesses. Mm -hmm. with their similarities. Yeah. So can we go and, and look at a, a, an international market together and mm -hmm. say, okay, this is a, this is our product what you can create you know just that's the beauty beautiful thing about networking and i often tell people when you attend events don't necessarily go with what you're going to get go with the intention on what you can give and nine times out of ten you're going to hear someone's 30 second elevator pitch and you're going to be thinking oh i know someone that i should connect that person to and that's how everything starts and once you learn the importance of serving others, you know, everything else for you just happens organically. And so, Mr. Gallant, I'm so happy to spend this time with you once again. You and I can talk forever. And we do have to do that Thank PJ. You. Yeah, we have to do the PJ thing, that PJ show <laughs> that you talked about. Um, the most important thing that I want everyone to uh, leave with here is 80% uh, of success is showing up. So we will see you at our free online networking event where you get to promote your business for free um, in the comfort of your home, wherever you reside, uh, dress up from the waist up and just show up, come and meet some amazing individuals. It's taking place on October the 29th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time till 9 p.m. And it's a free event. You'll get to hear some inspiring stories a little snippet from some of the co-authors that will be in the upcoming book. And you'll also get to hear in more detail some of the gifting sponsors who have such a big heart and want to make sure that all of you have some fun during all of the sessions uh, where you get a chance to win some amazing prizes. Who doesn't like to win prizes and do some shopping at the same time? I mean, from your, in your house, no driving anywhere, no long laps at the washroom. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. I love it. So uh, everybody, for now, we're going to say bye-bye and uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you.